Hello everyone and welcome to Singularity One-on-One. Singularity One-on-One is a podcast feature of Singularity Weblog, where you can go and listen to it or download it in full. As you may already know, my name is Nicola, aka Socrates, and as always, I will be the man with the questions. Today, I'm very privileged to have Dr. Peter Diamandis as my guest on the show. Dr. Diamandis is a Harvard-trained medical doctor and a self-admitted nine-year-old child space enthusiast and a visionary who dreams big and has the resume to prove that the best way to predict the future is to create it yourself. Hi, Peter, and welcome to Singularity One-on-One. Pleasure to be here. It's our pleasure to have you on the show. So let me start with the first question by asking you this. Peter, can you tell us a little more about yourself and your background, but especially why and how you got interested in issues such as advanced technologies in general and the singularity and commercial space flight and exploration in particular? So my life began with a passionate interest in opening the space frontier since my childhood. You know, born in the 60s with Apollo going on, it sort of became my mission in life, not only to go into space myself, but to take other folks with me. And uh, I ended up spending a decade up at MIT and studying molecular biology and aerospace engineering and then going on to get a medical degree. And, but really along the way became enamored with the notion that I could make the future I wanted myself. That, in other words, that I was uh, empowered to go and build companies, create technologies, create organizations that would implement the type of future I wanted to see. And it's a message I like to get out to people because now more than ever, each of us have access to incredible technologies, incredible networks and tools that allow you not to sit back passively and hope that the future you want will materialize, but to actually go out there and actively craft it. And I've become uh, passionate about understanding these technologies, gaining access to them, uh, becoming partners with the individuals creating them, and going and doing important things in the world. And for me, the important things in the world split into two basic camps. One is helping the human race transition off this planet, because it's during our lifetimes that the human race is going to become a multi-planetary species. Um, Not your grandchildren's life or their children's, but our lives over the next few decades. And that's extraordinarily impactful if you think about it. The last time that life moved out of one environment into another, it's when hundreds of millions of years ago we moved from an ocean-based species to living on land. And now we're going from living on Earth to the stars. The second area that I am extraordinarily passionate about that's happening right now is really the transformation of humanity uh, by the incorporation of extraordinary technologies. We'll call these uh, 10 to the 9th plus technologies or exponential technologies, but we're in the process of evolving humanity uh, to be something new and um, profoundly different, uh, where we are beginning to design technology and merge with technology uh, and increase the rate of our evolution at a faster and faster pace. And and how that moves forward is in part up to us and how we use this technology to change the world and create a world of abundance, which I'll speak to later, uh, is up to us. So in that sense, uh, would you say that your motivation is humanitarian, or is it scientific curiosity, or is it uh, the entrepreneur in you who wants to break through limits and uh, create the impossible? What is the general motivation behind your work? (laughs) Uh, My motivation is manifold. I am relentlessly curious. Uh, And the scientist and engineer in me about what causes something or what could possibly be. I'm also absolutely adamant that every single major problem on this planet can be solved. There is no problem that we cannot take on and slay with the right combination of people, technology, and capital. And when I hear people complaining, I just want to shake them and say, instead of complaining, go out there and solve the problem. What is it you don't like? What is the vision of the future you want to create? 
gather around you the people, the capital, the technology, and go and make it happen. Because if it doesn't happen, it's you that didn't step forward to make it happen. It's not that it can't happen. So those are my motivations. So how do you see yourself then in your own words? Who is Peter Diamandis? Are you a medical doctor, an engineer, an, an entrepreneur, a space enthusiast? Is there, I mean, is there a single box we can put Peter in? I would start by clarifying and saying I'm not a medical doctor. I went to medical school. Uh, my fourth year medical school, I had two companies I was running. I actually remember a conversation I had with the dean of medicine who said, listen, Peter, do you want to graduate or not? Because I was on the verge of not graduating. One of the benefits of Harvard is you can't fail out. And believe me, I was running a rocket launch company and a university and trying to squeeze medicine in at the same time. And I cut a deal with him and said, listen, if you let me graduate, I promise not to practice. And so I ended up graduating, but never did my internship and residency. Um, I am an entrepreneur. I love starting companies. I love the creative process. I've started 15 companies at this point uh, from uh, space adventures that sends people to orbit and Zero G that does parabolic flights and a rocket racing league and a, a low earth orbit satellite communications company and a small launcher vehicle system, a number of uh, nonprofits from International Space University, the Singularity University, and XPRIZE Foundation. And, and I view starting a company as a mechanism of gathering the right people and envisioning the future and using a company as a mechanism to go create the future, the technology, the service that you wish existed that you're going to go make happen. But ultimately, I'm, um, I guess I'm someone who loves uh, to inspire. I love to teach and I love to get people together to go and do what other folks say can't be done. I love a great challenge. And I guess my life has had two missions, opening up space, and the other is attacking humanity's grand challenges. Energy, water, food, health, education, all of those things. I do that through the XPRIZE Foundation and through Singularity University, which are two sides of the same coin. So where does Singularity University fit in your plan to create the future? I was, uh, I was actually trekking through Patagonia, through Chile, and I had a copy of uh, Ray Kurzweil's book, the Singularity is Near with me. And I was reading it in a beautifully written book. Uh, many of the ideas I had thought about for years and had dreamed of writing a very similar book. But as I read the book, what I realized was that there was no place on the planet that you could go as an individual and really learn about all of the fields that were in rapid exponential growth. AI, robotics, nanomaterials, biotechnology, human-machine interface, <clears throat> all of these fields, quantum computing, you know, the internet of everything. But these were the technologies that were the levers on the world that could be used to solve humanity's grand challenges. These were the technologies that within my XPRIZE universe I wanted the teams competing to use to go and, and solve those grand challenges. And so I had had the honor and pleasure of starting a university some 18, 20 years earlier called International Space University based in Strasbourg, France, which focused on interdisciplinary intercultural studies of space. It had started with Bob Richards and Todd Hawley, huge success, beautiful campus now in Strasbourg. And I said, I, it was one of these inspirations I have in the moments of my life when I see this idea and I say, I have to go and do that. It's, when, when one of those ideas grabs my heart and soul, I can't not do it. And for me, it was to start a university focused on these technologies. And so I wrote out what was the business plan in the back of the book and on the notes I had with me in the mountains, uh, uh, the uh, Torres de Pane. And I remember it was these 10 tracks, you know, a, a track on AI, uh, nano, bio, all of these fields, and came back, spoke to Ray about it. Uh, he loved it, uh, gathered together an incredible team of people, had a founding conference here at NASA Ames, uh, attended by folks like Tim Draper, one of the top VCs, and Larry Page, and, and Patrick Son Xiong, and many of the associate founders we have. And, and as a result, 
um, we've created this university. And for me, this is the place we cast a global net and we say, who out there is passionate about the world's biggest problems? Top of your game academically and a proven entrepreneur. Come here, meet each other, and decide which of these technologies you're gonna use to create a 10 to the 9th plus company or product or service, meaning something that can affect a billion people positively within a decade. And so that's SU. SU is a, a training ground. Think of it as sort of a Starfleet Academy for the world's biggest challenges.